Right, before we break for morning tea, we would like to make a uh, special presentation. Uh, and this e each year we have given presentation basically to people that we feel need to be acknowledged that probably won't be acknowledged in the mainstream, but we think they should be acknowledged. And so over the last couple of years we have had awards go to Ian and Mary Grant, to Marina Young for her work, to Peter McKenzie QC, to Brendan Malone, to Hilary Keft, uh, and to Andy Bray. Uh, and our award that we would like to do this morning uh, is to Garth and Anne McVicker, who are here this morning. Where are you, Garth? <laughs> there you are. So let me just tell you uh, very quickly, Garth and Anne McVicker are Mohaka Valley farmers, uh, and they founded the Sensible Sentencing Trust in 2001. Uh, and in his book, to, in his book Justice, uh, Tina doesn't like that photo, Garth. He's, she says you've got a much nicer smile than that. <laughs> but in his book he writes, initially I really wanted to call this organisation Family First because for me it was about the breakdown in family values. My reasoning was that if we addressed this, we addressed the crime rate. Bob McCoskery's Family First didn't exist in these days. What I was focusing on with the trust, which is why that name had stuck with me, was what I saw as the breakdown in moral fa values, the family structure, the family unit, as being the root cause behind escalating crime. My advisors convinced me that that was too big a sell. It was too big, it was huge, and you'd never get it off the ground. And they were right, 100% right. Thanks for the warning. They also said it wasn't provocative enough as a name or an idea. Oh no, that wasn't right. It's provocative, brother. Family first is provocative. So Garth and Anne established SST for three main reasons. They wanted to expose the, the problems with family breakdown. They wanted to give victims a voice. And they wanted to promote ideas to make New Zealand safer. And so in 2001, they, were, they uh, lobbied and were involved with the Sentencing and Parole Reform Bill, which was passed, which increased the sentence for worst murders from 10 years to 17. In 2002, they put victims' rights on the political radar, and they gave homicide victims' families opportunities to present to Parliament. In 2005, they lobbied on victims' rights. In 2006, they had a victims' charter was introduced, and they were awarded the National Trust of the Year. In 2009, there was that landmark case. Remember Sue Couch and the RSA murderers? and William Bell, who committed those murders with 102 previous convictions and who was released on parole. In the lead up to the election in 2008, they lobbied for 16 issues in the criminal justice area and they got 14 of them, uh, including three strikes for repeat violent offenders, repeat violent offenders, just in case you hadn't heard the rules. DNA taken from offenders, privilege of parole abolished for repeat offenders, a victim's reparation fund, National Victim Centre and the Bail Act. Now we've worked on a number of projects together, uh, including lobbying for three strikes law, bringing Theodore Dalrymple and David Fraser on a speaking tour. We were also involved in the recent march for Moko, which was that horrific child abuse case in Rotorua and also Christie's Law. Remember the 18-year-old Christie Marceau who was killed and her murderer, 18-year-old, had been placed on bail at his mother's address just down the road from Christie's place, despite the fact that he'd previously been charged with and since pled guilty to kidnapping Christie earlier in the year. And then I attended their victims conference in 2010. This is how it started. Hello, my name's Ida Hawkins. My daughter Colleen was raped and murdered in 1987. Hello, my name's Rita Crosscree. Five thugs bashed my son to death. Our little girl was abducted, raped and buried alive. Our son, Liam Ashley, was beaten to death in the back of a police van. My, vi my wife was raped and murdered in a home invasion on our Reparoa farm in 1998. 
It was the club that nobody wanted to join. But a leading commentator wrote this. Why do so many families of serious crime get involved with the Sensible Sentencing Trust? What many do not realise is that Garth and Anne are supporting the families of murder victims within days. And if you speak to some of those families and ask them who was the biggest comfort to them in their darkest hours, the answer will often be the SST. It will not be the legion of taxpayer-funded agencies, but it will be the voluntary, self-funded, sensible sentencing trust. At a recent meeting in Parliament in 2018, Justice Minister Andrew Little congratulated Garth McVicar for giving victims a voice and for forcing the justice system to make victims a prominent part of the process. However, not long after that, on the TV show The Nation, he called Garth and his colleagues nutters and loopy. Now, to be fair, Garth admits in his book, I'd be totally dishonest if I said there hadn't been a lot of wrong directions or wrong calls, we made a lot of mistakes, end quote. Yeah, he said a few clangers in his time. We all have. But the danger is that we have judged Garth and Anne not by their incredible work, but by the media coverage and what the media has said about them. He's the lock them up and throw away the key guy. But nothing could be further from the truth. And as I've learnt, what we say and represent is not always truthfully represented in the media, especially when they disagree with us. And they do. Yet in 2006, Garth was ranked 32nd in a New Zealand listener power list, a list of 50 most influential New Zealand people. And in 2014, he was ranked 62nd equal on the Reader's Digest most trusted New Zealand list, 13 places ahead of the police commissioner, Mike Bush. <laughs> Garth also made a submission on the same-sex marriage bill in 2013, and he said, quote, Changing the law would be another erosion of basic morals and values in society that have led to an escalation of child abuse, domestic violence, and an ever-creasing prison population. End quote. He emphasised another attack. The media reported that he said gay marriage would increase crime. He didn't, but it made a great headline. So Garth and Anne have given a voice to the silent victims of crime. Those are too scared, too intimidated, too traumatised, too worn out to speak for themselves. But they never tired. Garth would stand up in front of a Lions Club meeting and he'd say, I'm just a cow cocky, a Hawke's Bay farmer. He never wanted a public profile. He never wanted to lead some form of movement. He says, I'm not a leader. I don't want to be a figurehead. But he just turned up. He turned up. What does he really want? He says he wants to leave the country he loves in a better way than he found it, where respect of self and others have been reinstated as a given, not a rarity, where families eat together around the dinner table, where the supposedly stale notions of right and wrong are again recognisable and commonplace. Now, the McVickers, uh, it's on the Napier Taupo Highway. I visit as often as I can. And it all started when Garth's father, Ian, fell in love with a Hawke's Bay girl and they purchased this land, the first settlers in the Mohaka Valley. And that is Garth. <laughs> He's looking good, eh? And yes, he did kill that thing that's lying on the horse. And he probably ate it as well. At the very end of his book, he writes this. My wife and I have tried hard to instill the same values in our children, but we became progressively alarmed at the deterioration of these standards and the resulting escalation of violence in society. While sensible sentencing advocates and supports victims of violent crime, we've also become very aware that most of the offenders have a common denominator, a dysfunctional family, no male role model, and no kitchen table. I am not sure where this journey ends or if our job will ever be done, but to everyone who in one way or another has been part of this incredible experience, we thank you and salute you, Garth and Anne, 2011. That's how they finished the book. Well, Garth and Anne, we want to stop. We want to thank you and salute you. 
Reverend Billy Graham said, when a brave man or a brave couple takes a stand, it stiffens the spines of others. And Garth and Anne and I probably won't be sitting in a pew singing a praise song together, but if we're campaigning to put families first, we'll be locking arms in the same place. You guys won't receive a knighthood or a Queen's Honour from the state. Many of the people on the other side of the debate will and have. But we say, and our board was unanimous for this award, that we want to thank you for being a voice for victims, a voice for marriage, for strong families, a couple with determination, a voice for putting families first. You have stiffened our spine. And so, Garth and Anne, we honour you two today. Please come up. We honour. He has retired, so uh, and his daughter Jess is here, who has taken over, and so uh, and so we're enjoying a, a newfound relationship, continuing work, and continuing to put families first.